Today, we're going to talk about a super hard topic. It is something that I encounter with my patients on almost a daily basis, and it's the thing that brings most people to tears when they share their stories with me. If you find yourself identifying with this video, please remember that you are not alone and help is out there. We'll get deeply into this topic, but first remember, if you like this video and you find it insightful and helpful, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and follow along with all things pregnancy and women's health in the future. So let's get into it. Postpartum depression. Maybe you are dealing with this yourself, or maybe you've struggled with it in the past. Maybe you know somebody who struggled with this. Ultimately, if you've been impacted by postpartum depression, you know that it is very personal and deeply sensitive. So let's get rid of the stigma and blow the cover off of this topic. Ultimately, understanding something helps us have more power over it and helps us feel more comfortable addressing it with our friends and family and also with our healthcare providers. Now, let's talk definitions. We're gonna define some lingo so that you understand perinatal mood disorder, which is mood disorder surrounding pregnancy, a little bit better. First up, postpartum. A lot of people think that postpartum stands for postpartum depression, but that's actually not true. Postpartum means the period directly after birth. Next, postpartum depression. Postpartum depression is actually depression or anxiety directly after childbirth and within the first year after birth. Baby blues. This can be feelings of sadness, anxiety, or anger. It starts immediately after giving birth and lasts for only about two weeks. Postpartum psychosis. This is a rare form of mood disorder in the postpartum period that's often associated with hallucinations and thoughts of harming yourself or harming others. Perinatal mood disorder is mood disorder in both the prenatal period and the postpartum period. And just a quick definition check, prenatal means the period during which you are pregnant. So let's get into each of these. We'll talk about them in the order in which they present. So first up, let's talk about perinatal mood disorder. Perinatal mood disorder can happen at any time during pregnancy. I find it to be most common in women who have a history of anxiety or depression, but it isn't only associated with the history of those mood disorders. Most commonly, I find that it presents itself in the third trimester. Pregnancy hormones are real, and the third trimester is when women start feeling more aches and pains, they start sleeping less, and overall, they may start having more anxiety about the upcoming birth process, about what it's gonna be like to be a new mom, or what it's going to be like to add another kid to their already growing family. Honestly, it's all just a lot for a lot of people, and if somebody doesn't cry, in my office at least once a day, especially if they're after 36 weeks pregnant, I find my day to be not normal. Having perinatal mood disorder is a big risk factor for having postpartum depression. And a lot of women think, well, maybe I won't deal with this during pregnancy, but I will just hope that it will go away once my baby is born. Unfortunately, that's the exact opposite of what happens for most women. So if you are struggling with feelings of anxiety or depression during pregnancy, please address it with your healthcare provider sooner rather than later so that you feel like you have it addressed before your baby is born. Speaking of babies coming, let's get into baby blues next. Baby blues is weird and it's also fleeting. So before you get pregnant, your ovaries are producing the majority of your hormones. And then when you get pregnant, your placenta takes over and makes most of your hormones. Fast forward to the birth, you deliver your baby, and then comes the placenta and a huge drop-off in hormones. It takes about two weeks for your ovaries to start taking over again, and during that time, you may feel weird. You're laughing one minute, you're crying the next minute, you have no idea why you're doing either one of them. Ultimately, this can all be really normal, unless you're having those feelings of sadness the majority of the time. Postpartum depression is when those feelings of depression, anxiety, or yes, even anger, are the predominant feelings you're having. If you're struggling to want to get out of bed in the morning, if you aren't feeling particularly bonded to your baby, if you are crying all the time or having anxious thoughts that are just going over and over in your head and you can't stop thinking about bad things that are happening, or maybe you're even snapping at your partner or your other kids a lot, these can all be forms of postpartum depression and a reason to seek help. Occasionally having these feelings is normal, but having them more than 50% of the time, it's common, but it's not normal. And there's a big difference there. A lot of women struggle with their mood during pregnancy and in the postpartum period. And while that happens to a lot of women, it doesn't mean that it should be happening to a lot of women. If you are having these feelings, you are not alone. And I encourage you to seek help as soon as 
as you can. I can't tell you how many women come into my office on a daily basis and say, I had postpartum depression with my first baby, but I didn't address it and I wish that I had. And now they're on their second pregnancy or just had their second baby and they ask for help. They didn't give themselves permission to ask for it the first time. So let me be the person that gives you permission to ask for help. Now, if these feelings become severe, I need you to go to the emergency room. There is something called postpartum psychosis, which is a very rare mood disorder that happens in the postpartum period and is associated with very disorganized thinking. Um, these women may not be making sense. It also usually comes along with thoughts of harming yourself, harming other people, or tragically harming your infant. If you feel like this may be something that you have, you need to go to the emergency room immediately. This is a life-threatening disorder, and while it is rare, it definitely can happen, so please get help. Now that we've talked about pregnancy, let's talk about what it's like to be a mom especially a first-time mom. So everybody's pregnancy journey is different. Um, sometimes people accidentally got pregnant and then they are welcoming their new little bundle of joy. And sometimes people really tried to get pregnant and they're still excited about everything. Either way, when it comes time for the birth of your baby, most women are super excited. But maybe labor was long and hard, or maybe you had a different birth experience than you expected, or maybe baby isn't latching well and breastfeeding hurts, and, and things are just different than what you expected. That is okay, but expectations that are unmet can lead to feelings of grief and loss. And ultimately, some women, while they may love their baby, don't actually feel like they like them or are super bonded to them right away. These feelings are all okay. And in fact, they're common and normal. Expectations about what it'll be like to be a new mom are all over the board. And ultimately, most moms feel like it's not quite what they expected. You may feel grief over the loss of your former life. You have this newborn and they're awesome, but they also need you all the time and you give of yourself fully to them and then there's no time for you. So it's awesome, it's sacrificial, but it's hard and it's fully different than your life before for most people, especially if you're a first time mom. So give yourself the grace to have time to adjust. It is okay to feel sad. It is okay to feel a little bit anxious. It is okay to feel grief and loss. It's okay to feel frustrated sometimes. Ultimately, all these feelings are normal as long as they're not the predominant feelings that you're having. But since we're here, let's talk about some things you can do to combat these things. Number one, exercise. I cannot stress this enough. The recommendation during pregnancy is 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise at least five to six days a week, which is more than most of us who are not pregnant do. Exercise is awesome. Not only does it help you feel well physically, but it also helps you emotionally. It releases all those good hormones that make you feel happy. And if your body is feeling better, then you're likely to have a better emotional health. Number two, take time for yourself. A common theme I see among moms is this overwhelming sense of responsibility. You grew the baby on the inside and took care of your baby fully while it was growing, so it is your full responsibility to take care of your baby on the outside, right? Wrong. So you may be feeling like, well, I need to take care of this baby, my partner has to go back to work, therefore my partner shouldn't help at night. But excuse my language, that's a bunch of BS. Taking care of a newborn is a full-time job, especially when you add in housekeeping and all the things it takes to run a household. If you are taking care of a newborn, you don't get time for yourself. Whereas if your partner's out working, yeah, work is hard, but they also get a little bit of time for themselves usually. And don't get me wrong, I'm most of the time not blaming partners for this. Usually it's the women who feel like they need to do it all, and so they don't let their partners help them even if their partners want to help them. So if you're one of those women out there who's nodding along and thinking, oh yeah, that's totally me, cut it out. Take time for yourself. Let your partner help you. You need it. Your family needs it. And so take a little time every day or at least a couple of times a week to do something for you. It will help your mood immensely. And hey, maybe you even want to take the time to like exercise. Number three, talk to a therapist. 
Therapy can be super helpful for mood disorder, especially if it's on the more mild side. It's usually the first line in helping people feel better. Unfortunately, therapy can be expensive. It can be hard to find a therapist. And so a lot of people don't make the time and effort to do that. But I promise you, most of the time it's worth it. And hey, talk to your healthcare provider about it because they may have resources for you and may be able to refer you, which takes the legwork out of it. You may also want to try some supplements. Omega-3 fatty acids from a high quality fish oil can be helpful. Vitamin D can be helpful. Magnesium is helpful for all kinds of things in pregnancy, but it's definitely helpful for mood disorder as well. I find that a lot of women like the calm supplement before bed at night. And then there's a supplement called Rescue Remedy, and it's an herbal supplement that's safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding, and it can be really helpful for in-the-moment anxiety. So there's a lot of different forms of it, but if you take it while you're feeling anxious, it can help produce feelings of calm. There are also medications out there that are considered safe for both pregnancy and breastfeeding. So if you and your healthcare provider feel that it is severe enough to need medication, they may discuss this with you, although we won't go over those in this video. One more time, if you are struggling, please, please, please talk to somebody about it. Talk to your partner, talk to your family, talk to your friends, and definitely talk to your healthcare provider. I can't tell you how many women feel like they just need to push through and then they regret it. So don't be the person that regrets it. I have so many women that just push through anxiety and depression in their normal life and they come in and they say, well, you know, this is just kind of normal for me. I feel okay. And my challenge to them and to you is, why just feel okay when you could feel good? And for those of you who are working on treatment, but it's not quite where you want it to be and you're feeling pretty good, but not great, why would you wanna feel good when you could feel great?